So I've got a customer that's asking me for better than one arc second. And he'd like to control speed down to one milli rev per second. So we're going to take a look at a sine cosine commutating encoder from quantum devices. Um, this is a sine cosine uh, output with uh, 1250 line count, so times four, 5,000 fundamentals per rev. Um, the commutation tracks four, six, or eight. Uh, uh, I believe I have an eight pole motor here. So we can see um, the, the sine cosine encoder option has uh, one volt peak to peak sine differential, one volt peak to peak cosine differential, an index pulse, and uh, U, V, and W outputs. Uh, we're just going to use U, V, and W and not the inverts. So we just wired the, uh, the U, V, and W and not the inverts. And of course, it's uh, plus five and ground. And uh, the cable should have a shield. And the shield should be connected to Earth. All shields must be connected to Earth. So this encoder was actually easy for me to install. I am not a mechanical engineer. I'm just an electrical guy. So you can see these little aluminum or these tabs here that the, uh, the screws will go into and uh, the shaft diameter. So I'm look I was looking for a motor that had the tapped holes in the back of it to install a standard encoder uh, style. So you can see the, uh, the me mechanical patterns here. And of course, there's a nice cable uh, that we purchased, and this helped to get things up and running quickly so I don't have to mess with the little tiny connectors. Um, the motor that I'm looking at is Katie Mag motor right here out of Worcester. Um, I picked a very small 48 volt uh, winding uh, that can take a lot of current. And uh, it's got a very low inductance, but uh, we, can, we can drive it with the copley. But the uh, important thing for the mechanical installation is that the back of the motor, besides the shaft with a 0 0.3750 diameter, uh, there's a bolt hole pattern for, for mounting the encoder. Uh, another thing I particularly like about the quantum devices is there's some very nice documentation of how to install the feedback device. You know, you, you just press it on gently. You don't smash it on. That's a great picture right there. Um, you can see how the uh, encoder is relaxing into the center. Uh, and then you tighten it with a uh, hex screw. You know, gosh, this was just so easy to install. Um, there's a uh, timing mark on the encoder, which helps us align things to the... Uh, electrical cycle. I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, and then you, you bolt it down. Um, so there's some uh, correct gaps and spacings. And then be cognizant of cable routing. Um, some of these encoders are uh, uh, very uh, low profile, uh, but very, very easy for us to use here. So before I show you how to align the encoder and a proper procedure for aligning it, I'm going to do a little back of the envelope math here for the arc seconds. So uh, Wikipedia talks about arc seconds here. And uh, we can see the degrees. Um, so if we have one, 360 uh, degrees per rev, so it's 1 divided by 360. 1 divided by 360. So uh, we have a, you know, a, the resolution, uh, and then divide it by 60 for arc minutes, and then divide it by 60 again for arc seconds, and I got 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, if we look at the encoder fundamental of uh, 1250, multiply that line by 4, we get 5,000 fundamental counts per rev, and then times interpolation of 12-bit only, 40, 96, all copy drives can do 12 bits. And we've got this uh, really big, 20 million counts per rev. I invert that. Uh, let's put it into some engineering terms here. Okay, so times 10 to the minus 8 is a bunch less than times 10 to the minus 7. So it's like 
not only is it less than one arc second, it's like 15 counts worth of less than an arc second. Um, with the new AEV drive and the 16-bit A to D, uh, we, we'll be talking about milli arc seconds next. So here's the quantum devices sine cosine encounter, encoder that we have mounted to the back of the motor. You can see there's a really cool uh, glowing red LED on there, so that means the power is connected. Um, this was, again, really easy for, for mounting. Uh, it's a KD mag motor, uh, you know, UV, W, power, so we use the commutating encoder for the eight pole motor. Um, this is a Copley B, uh, Excelnet plus drive that can do the sine cosine with, uh, it's 12 bits, but it has a good E knob, so it's not some crappy A to D that's only really 10 bits. It's got a really good A to D converter in it. I'm um, using the Stow Bypass Jumper. The uh, USB to RJ11 is real simple and fast. And, of course, I'm using my XP Power. It's a 48-volt, 5-amp power supply. Uh, XP Power is a good power supply at a good price. And I just want to show you the new AEV, APV. This is the Excelnet Plus micro module. Uh, the next time I test this motor, I'll probably mount this drive right to the motor and use the 16-bit A to Ds to get uh, milli-arc seconds. Crazy. Okay, so uh, I'm running CME2 version 8.0, and I'm going to run through the setup screen here just to show us, you know, what do we what do we put together here? It's a brushless rotary. I got halls. I have an analog encoder. And I have a fundamental at 1250, which turns into 5,000 counts per rev fundamental. And uh, I'm just setting the interpolation to 128 to keep the counts into a reasonable number of counts per rev. Uh, so I can hit some high speed, so 640,000 counts per rev. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, how to do the and sinusoidal commutation and emulated encoder output. That's very cool. Um, so under tools, manual phase, we're going to enable a current vector and we're going to hold the zero position here with the current vector. And uh, you can see, you know, I can tweak the shaft a little bit, so that's not very tight yet. Um, I'd like it to hold this hall state here, UV low, W high. Uh, so I'm going to give it a boost of current like 10 times, something more along the rated current. So now the motor is more stiffly locked into a position with respect to the electrical cycles. And then I'll mount the encoder on the back and turn it till I see the correct Hall code. Um, so I'll put the, use the alignment marker first and then tweak it a bit to get to the right Hall code. So you can see in this test setup, this is like a motor manufacturer. They'll pump three amps into U, split it down V and W, thereby locking the shaft and then rotate the hall to the right code and then we have a perfectly aligned for commutation feedback device even with an index marker according to the reference indicator so after i do the uh, installation in the proper position um, i have to figure out the phasing uh, we'll rotate the current vector and look at the hall indicators and make sure that uh, there it's aligned properly uh, when you go forward, of course, counts are going up, and the red indicator should lead in both directions with no load. Um, we can change the hall state and the hall offset to get the right alignment. If we had a, uh, uh, a hall offset adjustment, we would do that after we install the encoder, okay? So you can see... Oh, this is a wicked lead, lead and a wicked lag. All right, adjust the hall offset to zero. Um, you know, I want I want one file I can save, which is like used with this motor, and then I can replicate it. So this this file can be used to manufacture this drive uh, motor or this motor encoder combination and make all the motors the same. So that that's really important if you're going to be the motor manager. So I'm just going to jog the motor into a good position here. Uh, we'll set it to zero. So I'm going to do one rev at the motor shaft. 
uh, using the CME scope. Uh, you can see I've, I've oh, I'm going to do 10 reps, excuse me. So I added another zero here to the 640,000. Um, we'll take a look at how, how this works out. Now this has all been tuned up. I've got, you know, PP and uh, the current loop tuning, the velocity loop and the position loop, it's all tuned up. Um, it's pretty good tuning. Uh, the notes of interest are, you know, while we're, while we're spinning at a constant velocity, what does the following error looks like? Uh, if we were running, we'd probably have about plus or minus 50 counts of following error while we're moving. I, I don't believe this is due to the feedback device. This motor has a little bit of a cog in it. Uh, we throw some inertia on it, that'll smooth things out. Uh, this cog was in with respect to the electrical cycle, so I already determined that previously. Um, you don't see much quantization on the encoder, so the encoder count has you know, very good effective number of bits. Um, and you can see we have a move and settle. Um, we can get, we do get to zero. Uh, so I just saw a plus or minus one bit here. Um, so a little more integral and we can settle a little faster. But the, uh, there is a little bit of plus or minus a count. Uh, you got plus or minus a count here uh, of position control. So that's 12, no, that's not even 12 bits. That's a 128 times interpolation, not a 4096. So we'll take a look at a higher interpolation rate, and I'll have to do the two. Okay, so basically I'm going to change the interpolation from 128 to 4096, which is 32 times more counts per rev. So I got 20,480,000 counts per rev. And if we make a move, a single rev move, we'll see what the trajectory looks like. And uh, this is a crazy number of counts per rev. Uh, speeds will be limited to about 100 RPM um, based on the maximum you know, counts per second we can do, but 20 million counts per second. Uh, we can still see that there's plus or minus some error while we're moving. Again, that's the uh, torque detent. We have so many counts that we can actually measure it pretty clearly. Uh, there's a little integral to steady state. You can see the quantization noise when we're holding position at 12 bits. Uh, we do have a good effective number of bits in the drive. Uh, so this plus or minus uh, 10 to 20 counts worth of quantization, you know, that could be signal to noise ratio. That could be a little bit of, uh, you know, noise uh, on, on, on the system. Um, but you can see, you know, with the Copley quantization here is, uh, is a couple of bits here. Um, so the next, uh, next time I'll experiment with the 16-bit A to Ds on the AEV. Uh, so we'll try the little guy mounted onto the, onto the motor, make a little drive motor package, and see what kind of crazy interpolation we can get out of that. Okay, uh, I think that's it for sine cosine encoders. Uh, I hope you like. I hope you like them. Uh, I think they're very interesting. And uh, this this encoder device here from Quantum Devices in in high quantity is very reasonable. Uh, I think I picked mine up for like 200 bucks from the local distributor. Um, but uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna consume a lot of them, then you probably get a really good deal. Hey, thanks for watching. Thank you.